So traditionally, when we want to handle how much materials we are taking from our shop and how to restock, we use the inbuilt inventory system of our WooCommerce. However, today I want to share something that can help you actually restrict how many orders that you should get in a day or how many orders that your business should be able to ship out. So I was looking online until I found a Remy Corson's plugin that he developed just uh, about, let's say, uh, two days ago. And it's something that you can use right now with what's going on in the world. So assuming you have a small business with a very little manpower to carry out uh, the, the shipping of goods, you can actually have something that uh, will just allow you to take maybe, let's say, 10 orders and then you will have a message saying that you've exceeded your capacity to, to take in any new orders. And basing on that, you'll be able to have your customers still see your items, of course, without the pricing and the, the cut buttons, add to cut buttons, but your shop will still be available and you don't have to worry about getting extra orders. So what we need to do is actually just come to this button here and download uh, this particular plugin uh, from this URL, which is at GitHub at uh, Coson R, and then the next thing that we'll do is uh, we'll add it in our in our plugins and activate. So we have it here: restrict orders per day for WooCommerce, and we need to activate it. After install, uh, when we come to our settings page, in the general settings, we actually have a. Uh, a maximum orders that we need to fill out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to two so that we can quickly uh, process out our orders panel in our WooCommerce. I'm going to come back as a customer and go to the store and I'm going to just order a few things here and then I'll go view the cart, skip the cart, proceed to checkout, fill in uh, my details, And then all I need to do is finally place the order. So we have order one placed and it's received. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to do the same thing over again. So we're going to go to the shop and make another order. And then we are going to place our order. And that order has been received. So if we come back to our shop here, we actually see that uh, it's telling us we have exceeded our capacity. So you can't order anything uh, today. So let me just go through that code to show you how we actually can be able to edit that. So we'll not write the code, but we'll just be able to see how that is spinned up. So I'll ed open up my editor. We have the basic uh, elements that are needed for a plugin to start. It's basically this plugin has been put in so that uh, so that people can be able to use this quickly. So of course we start off with uh, uh, the little protection to make sure that no one is uh, hitting at this file directly from the browser. And then the next thing we do is that uh, this plugin is written in uh, object-oriented programming. So there is a use of a class which is called uh, ROPD, which is the short uh, restrict orders per day. So we first check if this particular class exists, and if it exists, then we do nothing. Uh, we just call for an instantiation of that same uh, class. However, if it doesn't exist, then we go ahead to uh, we go to ahead to declare. So this function is the first one that runs in any given class, and therefore in this function we are going to run three different kinds of, act, uh, of hooks. We have an action hook that taps the plugins loaded uh, action and in this one we add the text domain so that this particular plugin can actually be translated. You'll see as we go down here that it has translation marks that means we are able to translate it and use it in different languages. Uh, the next action hook that we have is uh, the WooCommerce general settings which is the one that has all those settings involved um, to bring us to this page when we come in our settings page. So essentially we're going to be working on two of these fields. So we're going to have a numbers field, we're going to have a text field here that will allow us to do a number of things. So 
first things first is we look at when we tap when we add this uh, function to this filter uh, which is WooCommerce general settings it passes us it gives us an argument which is settings that we are able to see so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just try to dump these settings and we can see what we have in there so after that dumping I'll just add die to allow us to see what goes on so I'll come to the back end reload and we'll see that we have quite a lot of information that's passed in here uh, a lot of options so in here I'll just uh, change this a little bit I'll add so let me save this come back and reload we shall see that we have quite a number of things in here we have titles and fields and zip and when we reach all the way down shipping enabling tax currencies we're able to see that we can tap in and add other IDs in the different sections that we do have so similarly we're going to tap into the section that is called general options and we're going to go for the section end in this particular place so we have our general options starting here where we have the sellings location and the different countries we sell to the shipping and in this is where we're going to tap and add at the section end here is we're going to just add a few fields just before it so that's why we use this particular um use that particular hook which is a filter of that information then we actually modify it so we'll tap the settings and we're going to say we're going to get updated settings which is an empty array and then for each settings as we've seen we're going to have it as a section then we'll look for the general section using this if uh, we'll use this if function to get the section ID that's called general settings and we shall try to look for the section type which is the section end and inside that if we fulfill this whole conditional then we shall write some updated settings first we're going to have this field which has the maximum orders per day uh, of course it has a, a description tooltip and that is uh, essentially let me just save this so that we can reload and see what's happening so we reload this here this little tooltip here is what we're talking about it's the one that tells you why this field is available so this particular parameter in our array is actually why we have it so we give this an id the field an id of maximum orders per day then it will be a number a type number and we'll add css to which to be minimum of 300 pixels and of course we add the other information uh, just to satisfy uh, the different versions of WooCommerce that we might have so for WooCommerce less than two we have STD which is a field that is needed and we also have a default of a hundred so we are filling in our number and saying we should have a hundred orders per day and in WooCommerce less than two we are also saying it should be a hundred so depending on the WooCommerce you have installed this will work and then we have a description for this particular field which is here and which says you must enter a number just above here now for the next field we have it with a message which is limited uh, it has a tooltip and then i'm just going to attempt to change this here because i don't like the way <coughs> it appears we give it a css and then of course we give it a a standard uh, message that we would like to see so I'll reload this since I changed it to a text area and I think it looks better we have our message in there and I think that is what we need so we'll move again now we'll get this up this array of updated strings we've been joining it to the empty array we had before so we passed in a new setting we added in another field so for each of the different sections we are getting, we are going to add this settings field to the section that we had, which is general uh, options. And then afterwards, we return the updated settings. 
and that's why we're able to get the two fields that we have here under general settings. Now, once we have our fields added to make things a little more dynamic, we then add in a new function which is enable catalog mode. And this is just added into the init hook. We check if we're in the admin area, then we don't show anything. But if we are on the front end, that is otherwise, we've set some variables and we are getting the option that we have saved, which is called maximum orders day. And this particular option was saved actually here in this updated setting. And that's what we have here. So that's the option we're getting from our database. We are adding a default message, which is our, we have exceeded our capacity and we are sorry. Uh, so we cannot take your orders for today. Then we're also getting the message that we had saved here, we're getting it because it's saved as an option. So we ask ourselves, is the order capacity message that we have here empty? If it is empty, then we are going to set this new message as this, as our new, this will be set as our order message. But then we'll have, we'll not have the orders capacity message at empty at all. Then we, what we do next is that we get the daily orders count. So when we get the daily orders count, which is a function we are having in this class, if this function or what we return from this function is greater than or equal to the orders capacity, then we remove the loop, we remove the shop item that is adding to cut, we remove the add to cut for the single pages, we remove the pricing, we remove pricing from all <coughs> the different pages, either from the single product or from the shop itself. So we remove by tapping into these actions here and remove the messages or the buttons that are available. So we edit the template that we do have there. And if this orders is equal to or greater than the number that we have there, then we pass a new notice, a WooCommerce function that says we're going to throw this message, which is we have exceeded our capacity and we are sorry. And then we throw that as a message. We have already seen this in action and it's actually what we have here. So this is how this plugin works. The one thing that we haven't looked at is the daily orders function. And now this function is actually receiving an argument of date which is equal to now. So what we do is that after this we use our global to query our database which is the global WPDB. I have a video of how we can query database and it's actually in the link uh, that has just shown up. And this shows us how we actually query our database directly in WordPress. So we're getting our WordPress database and querying by adding this SQL statement. And it says, let's get, uh, let's get the count. We are counting how many orders we're counting how many orders we have. Those are posts with an ID and we are getting them from the table which is posts and we are setting it as P. So every time we use P, we are saying let's go to the table of posts and find those posts in the where the post type is shop order. So we're going for the custom post type which is shop order. We are getting the date of those posts and we are trying to make sure that either it is greater than today or it's in between the two days, uh, less than or equal to. And then we are saying inside those posts, we should check whether that post status is either on hold, processing or completed. So we have to know that it is not an order that has failed. So it has to be any of these uh, WooCommerce uh, statuses which is a, a custom post status. And then we shall return the result of this query of our database. So that's how we find out how many, uh, actually how many posts or how many orders we have for that day. So this part, particular function will give us that and that's why we're able to add, juxtapose it next to the orders capacity and run this code. 
So that's how this whole function works and that's how we're able to have this. So you don't have to close down your shop, you don't have to feel beaten, uh, you don't have to feel like you're helpless. If uh, you feel like you can handle more numbers, then go ahead and increase uh, how many uh, fields you have in here so that your customers when they come to your shop they're able to shop. However if you feel like uh, today you've had more than enough just change that setting, reload and close the shop. You don't have to take in any more orders until tomorrow and automatically this functionality will work when tomorrow appears because the server will be queried to check if it's a new day and then it will start all over again. So thank you for watching, uh, I hope this was helpful, I hope this will help you uh, settle uh, many of your queries in your shops that you're customizing and if you like the video please subscribe if you want to see more plugins that are reviewed this way, let me know in the comments and let me know which plugins you want to work with and you want to have reviewed. Um, we'll try to endeavor to see how they code or if we can find a simpler solution than what is already there. So thank you for watching and bye bye.